Revamping the World Cup with 48 nations. A new era of football. 16 more teams at a single World Cup, making it a total of 48 staff from the 2026 tournament. More and more nations and cultures finally have the chance to feel the sensation of the greatest football tournament and arguably the biggest sports event. Double the number of stadiums compared to the last World Cup. A higher chance for sensational underdog stories like Costa Rica in 2014 and Morocco in 2022. All this will be covered in today's video. So stay tuned to find out all the answers on the new World Cup. Yes, the 2026 World Cup will change football forever. We will witness a radically different format that, is safe to say, has never been used at a major European or world tournament so far. Many media outlets, podcasts, experts, pundits, specialists, or just fans of the game voice their opinions on the new format, which will feature not 32 teams as it was before, but 48. Well, the vast majority of these opinions were negative, and mainly with criticism towards the body that is responsible for making such decisions. FIFA, headed by its president, Gianni Infantino. It's clear to all of us that this decision was made with the aim of making even more money from the governing body. And despite the negativism about it, nothing can be done. So maybe we should just accept the situation and look for the positive thing in the overall picture. Because, believe us, there's a lot of good news for all of us with the integration of 16 more World Cup teams. We just have to look on the bright side. So let's get into it. First, we should talk about the brand new format. The idea of bringing 16 more teams into the World Cup, taking them from 32 to 48, was adopted back in 2017. This will cause the tournament to have the following format. 12 groups consisting of four teams each, with the top two teams from each group qualifying directly for the knockout stage, alongside the eight best-performing third-place sides. 32 teams in total. From there on, there will be a new knockout stage, the round of 32, Finally, with the well-known round of 16, quarterfinals, semifinals, and the final, which has been recently announced to be held in New York at the MetLife Stadium. This change of format is undoubtedly the biggest the World Cup has ever seen, probably even bigger than the ones made in 1982 and 1998, when the tournament started welcoming 24 and 32 teams respectively. Well, to be completely honest, purely in terms of the development of the sport in the last 30 years, such change practically makes sense. Only since 1994, FIFA has recognised almost 70 new footballing nations, from 147 30 years ago to 211 in 2024. This means that if the World Cup continues to be held with 32 teams, the percentage of participants will drop as the number of FIFA-recognised nations grows progressively. For example, the percentage of teams at the 2022 edition, based on all football nations, was just 15%. But what are the pros and cons of a World Cup with 48 teams? Let's start with the negative aspect. More important than anything in the world is people's lives. There's no doubt about that. As you may be aware, since Qatar began building the stadiums, hotels and overall infrastructure in the mid-2010s for the 2022 tournament, more than 6,500 workers have died in Qatar's heat, making this particular World Cup one of the best ever. This caused a massive controversy, and instead of fans enjoying a great tournament, which is the main purpose after all, they witnessed political and geopolitical scandals, and especially at its beginning. Now just imagine what would happen in 2026, when we will have an even bigger tournament and three host nations. The United States, Mexico and Canada will have to welcome even more fans from all over the world, because more fans and teams automatically means more training facilities, more stadiums, and more hotels and rooms for accommodation. This, on the other side, leads us to the logical thought that from now on it's more or less impossible for a single nation to host the World Cup. Just imagine the country with the biggest economy. The United States couldn't host the tournament by itself. Then what to say about the other single countries wanted to host the tournament in the future? Another example of this is the 2030 tournament, which again will be held in three countries. Spain, Portugal and Morocco. Another topic that should not be overlooked is the fatigue and potential injuries of the players. Let's start with the current 23-24 season, which according to some studies, is one of the campaigns with the most ACL ruptures. An injury 
wildly considered as the toughest in football. Well, 23-24 will forever be remembered with this negative fact, because just look at the names. Gavi, Edin Militao, Thibaut Courtois, Neymar, Ivan Perisic. We have some amazing stars and talents right here, and many specialists express the opinion that the reason for such a high number of torn cruciate ligaments is basically a bigger fatigue in the muscles and shorter recovery time. This is happening because, apart from the league schedules, the players had to put their responsibilities with their clubs on pause midway through the season in order for the first ever winter World Cup to be held. Now, picture this. A 10-month club season between August 2025 and May 2026, and then a World Cup starting on June 11th and ending on July 19th. Hypothetically, if we say, for example, that Spain players play the 2026 World Cup final and Barcelona reaches the Champions League final, players like Pedri and Lamina Yamal would practically feature in every single match through the season and will have no more than 10 to 15 days to rest before the start of the next season. This is crazy, just to think about. Another aspect of why the 48-team World Cup is not a good idea is certainly the less entertainment in the group stage. So far, when there have been eight groups from which the top two teams qualify for the knockout stage, the drama around those qualifying teams has been big, and realistically speaking, there has been a level of suspense until the very end of the group stage. For comparison, from now on that suspense will largely be taken away, since there's a good chance that only one team will drop out of a group, which reduces the entertainment significantly. Also, the goal difference will also have an increasing impact on whether you go ahead or not. Let's recall the scenario of England's group of the last World Cup. The three lines were drawn with Iran, USA and Wales in the same group. England thrashed Iran 6-2 in his first game, but didn't guarantee qualification only by this result. Well, from now on, with the fact that there is a great chance to qualify as a third position team, an emphatic victory of this kind would drastically increase the chances of qualification and make the rest of the games in the group pointless. Also, to finish off with the cons, a World Cup with 48 teams would seriously diminish the interest in the tournament, or at least the first three weeks of it. In fact, what is the original purpose of the World Cup? To build anticipation and impatience in the fans, because the World Cup is a symbol of sensation, drama, entertainment. Well, excuse us, but we don't really find anything sensational in a tournament in which almost all the teams qualify for the knockouts. Practically, to conclude this part, the group stage will be pretty unnecessary from here on. However, let's focus on the other side of the coin. The 48-team World Cup would be a massive opportunity for smaller teams to qualify for the tournament. For example, some African or Asian countries surely wouldn't have another chance to feel the sensation of playing and watching football on the biggest stage there is, if not for this new change. Also, it would also benefit sleeping giants, that have had huge success in the past, but due to internal problems, have failed to qualify for a long time. Such an example could be the Czech Republic, which has participated regularly before the breakup of Czechoslovakia. However, after that, the Czech Republic played World Cup football only once in its history, in 2006. Another example could be Bulgaria. The Balkan country has played seven times at the World Cup, qualifying twice in the knockout stage and even finishing fourth at the last World Cup held in the States in 1994, with legend Haristo Stoichkov in the team. Well, since 1998, Bulgaria has failed to feature in any of the next six editions of the tournament, hoping to break the curse in 2026. Now, touching on the topic of what variety of teams can qualify for the tournament, it's time to talk about how many sides from each confederation will field. Starting off with Europe, the countries in that confederation will see their entrance rise from 13 to 16. Thus, from now on, it might be increasingly difficult for major nations to miss out on a World Cup, such as Sweden in 2022 or Italy in 2018 and 2022. Additionally, players like Erling Haaland, one of the biggest names in European football, can only rejoice at the change because his nation, Norway, is not a major international giant and qualifying for the World Cup is incredibly difficult. And at the end of the day, it would be a pity not to watch Haaland at least once at the biggest football tournament in his career. Conmebol, the South American Confederation, will see their entrance rise from four to six. Here, the story is the same. Colombia and Chile failed to qualify for the 2022 World Cup 
And from here on, given the traditions of those two countries on the football map, the chance would be increasingly high for them to qualify compared to nations like Bolivia or Venezuela. The African Confederation definitely wins the Expansion World Cup lottery since the CAF teams will upgrade from 5 to 9. And if you think this is unfair, keep in mind that African countries are the most unpredictable and often the most entertaining. For example, at the last World Cup, the qualified teams were Senegal, Tunisia, Morocco, Cameroon and Ghana. By comparison, just eight years earlier at the Brazil World Cup, three of those teams were different with Ghana and Cameroon managing to feature in both 2014 and 2022. The other African nations back then were Nigeria, Algeria and Ivory Coast. Now, with nine of the 16 additional teams already in the equation, how many more entrances would Asia and North America have? Well, both would get an additional two spots to the 2026 World Cup, with Oceania getting the last guaranteed place. The final two entrances will be made up of intercontinental playoff winners in a mini-tournament in the USA. The competitors of this playoff will be made up of one nation from South America, Asia, Africa and Oceania, and two from North America. Another and perhaps the biggest pro of the 2018 World Cup, the greater chance of an astounding underdog story, like Costa Rica in 2014 and Morocco in 2022. The two teams were drawn in the groups of death in those editions of the World Cup and not only qualified for the knockout stage, but managed to reach the quarterfinals and semi-finals respectively. Truly some sensational World Cup runs for the ages. And of course, we can't miss the fusion of even more colourful, unique and different cultures in the stadiums during the World Cup with the integration of 16 more nations. Viking chants, vuvuzelas, extravagant dances and typical appearance. Football fans have seen it all. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to leave a like, subscribe and give your opinion on the topic. Do you think this would be a successful model to follow up in future World Cups as well? Or FIFA have definitely messed it up this time? Give us your thoughts. Also, don't forget to click on some of our latest videos. Bye for now and catch you in the next one. Hey, GOF, do you reckon the 48 Team World Cup would be banging? I do. Like and subscribe.